what people need to understand is the low power 5G path is here today and providing massive opportunities for a company like Beware to take advantage and, and bring new novel and disruptive solutions to market. Beware Holdings Inc. is a sponsor and client of PinnacleDigest.com. PinnacleDigest.com's parent company owns shares and warrants of Beware Holdings Inc. Every year, tens of thousands of people, including business leaders, industry experts, and entrepreneurs, flock to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress, also known as MWC. The largest mobile exhibition of its kind, 2018's events saw more than 100,000 people attend. The theme of MWC 19 is on intelligent connectivity with a focus on the fusion of 5G, AI, and the Internet of Things. For investors, knowing how these evolving technologies may shape the future is critically important when portfolio planning. Nations with advanced and effective 5G technologies will have a higher likelihood of economic prosperity than those without. 5G, AI, and IoT will not only change the mobile landscape, but the global economy as well. Toronto-based Beware is an Internet of Things solutions company that designs and manufactures industrialized hardware with sensors and software applications to track real-time info on movable assets and environmental sensors. The company develops mobile applications, middleware, and cloud-based solutions that stand alone or that can be readily integrated with existing software. Beware has a relationship with Bell, Canada's largest communications company, which provides advanced broadband wireless services across the country. We'll find out more about that relationship shortly. Today, Beware CEO Owen Moore will partake in a panel discussion with representatives from Nokia and Ericsson to discuss the value proposition of mobile IoT, among other things. Beware has developed sensors for the mobile IoT space, which have been certified in North America. And after his panel discussion, I'm going to catch up with Owen to find out where Beware is headed in 2019. We provide low-powered asset tracking solutions to track non-powered assets. And we also get involved in connected sensor solutions for smart city and, and agri-tech. In our first full financial results that we've released since the launch of our MIOT solutions, we've seen revenue growth on the order of 72%. We look for really micro changes in the technology that we can take advantage of to, to be more competitive, to produce a, a lower cost device that hopefully helps those numbers continue to ramp for us. Owen, it's great to be with you in Barcelona. Thanks for having us. I want to talk about industrial IoT. What does that mean to Beware? What type of technology services do you guys provide? That's a great question, Alex. And first of all, we're super excited to be here in Barcelona. This is our industry showcase, and, and we get a chance to talk about all the fun solutions and unique products that we're bringing to market. So what does IoT mean for Beware? You know, Beware focuses on two specific IoT segments. We provide tracking services for non-powered assets. It's an absolutely massive market. We're talking about pallets, containers, trailers, crates, billions of potential opportunity uh, just in North America alone, and that's exponentially larger as you move into the, the European and the Asian market. Uh, the other market that we tackle is the connected sensor market, where we focus on agri-tech and smart city solutions to provide relevant data off of fixed assets. So those are two massive markets. We call them obnoxiously large, and, and we're excited about the potential of them. Can you talk about some real-world uh, use cases uh, for some of these technologies that Beware's already implemented? Sure. The sensor, the connected sensor market is one that is, is near and dear to our hearts. We've recently um, rolled out a solution for Toronto Water Services, whereby we monitor the water supply for any potential issues, for any leaks, for major leaks, for blockages, and we provide data to the municipal staff in real time that lets them address an issue prior to it becoming a major expenditure for them. And like, that's a like huge a flood amount. or a sinkhole or something. A flood or a sinkhole, which can have a major capital expense in, in fixing. Uh, in fact, we had one in Toronto whereby a, a flood, you know, flooded the subway and shut down a, a section of the street. So those are the issues we're trying to prevent in real time and allowing Toronto Water to address them before they become a major. And your sensors monitoring the pressure could potentially prevent that? We monitor the pressure to determine any rises or drops in pressure, which would be indicative of a leak or a blockage. We monitor flow inside the pipe. So there's a variety of sensors that we use to help Toronto Water understand the operations of the municipal water supply. 
You know, as the CEO of Beware, a relatively small Canadian company, to be on a panel with the likes of Nokia, Ericsson, how was that and what expertise do you have to offer? Why are you up there with those guys? Well, that's a good question. And, you know, when we were invited, we first thought they might have chosen the wrong company to come and present <laughs> along with uh, Nokia and Ericsson and, and Deutsche Telekom. But I think we provide a perspective on the industry. We were early adopters of the technology. We're well known. We have multiple carrier engagements selling our solutions today. So they look for somebody who has some you know, street smarts with respect to the technology and, and, and to share that with any potential developers that want to come into the ecosystem. And, and from our perspective, we want to elevate the industry. The more people that know about it, even the more competitors we have raises awareness and it's a massive market mm -hmm. and there's plenty of business for, for everybody. Talking about business, when you guys come to a summit or a conference like this, are you hoping to establish new relationships with mobile carriers? or enhance the ones you currently have? Yeah. What's the goal? So, I mean, we're pretty buttoned down in North America. We have strong carrier relationships with AT&T and Bell, and we're starting to do some work with T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. But this conference here in Barcelona draws the largest of the large mobile network operators. And our strategic initiative is to expand in Europe, and this is where we get access to all of them all in the same week. So we're, we're super happy to have the opportunity. Everyone's talking about 5G. It's in vogue, it's in the media. Most people here understand what that means, but the average Joe doesn't. What is 5G? So what a lot of people don't understand about 5G is it's here today. The cellular technologies that we use, LTEM and NB-IoT, those are 5G compliant technologies and they're specific to addressing having small, inexpensive devices last for many years and be able to monitor assets for whatever conditions they're going through. There is another aspect to 5G that's called millimeter wave. This is the super fast 5G, super low latency. It's designed for autonomous vehicles to be able to talk to each other and do autonomous driving. It's designed for the drone market. It's designed for the virtual reality headset market. That 5G hasn't been commercially rolled out to any large extent. But what people need to understand is the low power 5G path is here today and providing massive opportunities for companies like Beware to take advantage and, and bring new novel and disruptive solutions to market. People talk about 5G like a super highway. The infrastructure for that exists for the low power devices, but it, not yet. It is. It's two separate streams. We have uh, in the 5G ecosystem, we have super fast bandwidth, super low latency, and then we have low cost devices that are super optimized on power consumption. And so. 5G is here today. This MIOT summit is a 5G summit. It's just not addressing the millimeter wave side of 5G, which is the high speed, low latency side. Okay. Arguably, MIOT opens up a much broader market than autonomous vehicles. There's only so many vehicles in the world. If you compare that to the number of pallets, just in the US, there's 1.3 billion pallets in the market. There's only about 600 million vehicles, and that includes every vehicle across the spectrum and so our feeling is that it's the low powered aspect of 5G that opens up the massive market opportunity. And with Beware's devices, what is it providing exactly in real time with your mobile applications and your sensors? What do you guys provide companies? Sure, so we monitor uh, not just location, although we are obviously heavily focused on location, but we monitor things like temperature, air pressure, humidity, light levels, impact, motion, tilt. Across which sectors? Across transportation and logistics, across supply chain, across construction, where we monitor generators, jackhammers, and other tools and equipment. And that, that's what has us excited. And when you think about the, all the potential opportunities for applying a tracking device that monitors the environmental conditions, it's absolutely massive. And which verticals is Beware working on right now uh, with, with companies in 5G? Sure, so uh, supply chain, transportation, construction, logistics, and then on our connected sensor side, we get into smart city applications and we get into agri-tech applications, monitoring things like weather conditions, soil moisture, dew point, insect infestations. These are all elements that we can help farmers understand how their fields are operating. So we're at GSMA's Innovation City. Beware is demonstrating some of its IoT solutions. Chris, can you talk about how this works? Yeah, what we're doing today is we're kind of demonstrating on the rowing machine how you would use pressure. And you've got to maintain that pressure the same way the city maintains the pressure in the pipes. We're looking at data every 15 minutes coming through the network to our cloud and then going through our API to Toronto's network. And they're able to study that data, analyze the data, look for leak detection, look for too much pressure buildup, and at the end of the day, provide better service to their clients by maintaining the network underground. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to row for the first 15 seconds and we're going to create a benchmark or an average. Okay. okay you don't want to go too hard or too slow. We're looking to create a steady, steady pressure. You got it. After 15 seconds, you're going to see two lines appear and you need to keep the pressure. You don't want to go too high and you don't want to go too low with your pressure. Now maintain the pressure. You're now like the city grid. So you managed to maintain the pressure for eight seconds. And this is all being judged by this? Yes, now this data gets sent through our device to our back-end application, and we can compare you to other people who have rode today and who lasted the longest and who generated the best average of pressure. Margo, on January 23rd, Beware announced that Orange had tested some of its MIOT solutions. Can you talk about how that went? Sure. So essentially, Orange tested our devices uh, on both their NB-IoT and LTM networks. Um, it went very well. And the idea behind doing that is essentially to try to strike down a commercial agreement to distribute through Orange to their end users. Right. We're in Barcelona right now. What does your European and global sort of expansion initiative look like? Well, we're working on several carriers, which is a number one strategy for expansion as the networks are being deployed around the world. We're also working outside of Europe, for example, in Asia, we've been doing testing with Singtel uh, for quite some time now. The great thing about this conference is that's where you can all get them. You can just show up with the box, like we did with Orange, and stick a SIM card and show them that it can work here. So our Beware's Mobile IoT Nerf Gun Shooting Range. How does this work? Okay, so what we're doing is we're showcasing the power of MIoT and how it integrates with connected sensors. This is an interactive display that measures the speed and accuracy that you're able to hit the targets, Alex. So with that, maybe you can show off. All right, man. I'll see, you. see what I can do here. Score, so what we've hooked up to here are pressure sensors that are attached to the targets. Yep. But those pressure sensors could easily be in a municipal water supply. Those sensors could be soil humidity sensors that we use for monitoring agricultural conditions. Those sensors could be particulate matter sensors for monitoring the environmental conditions of the air in a particular area. Uh, it's just an example of uh, connect so wide sensors. reaching. The verticals are almost endless. There's plenty of opportunity for us. And what you can see there is, is Alex's great score of 837. <laughs> was transmitted to the cloud and displayed on our portal over here. Yeah, first introduced Beware to our subscribers and viewers in late 2017. I want to get a sense of what's changed with the company since then. What do investors have to look forward to? So since 2017, we've rolled out some new exciting products um, that are directly aligned with Carrier's strategy to bring new product to market. Um, since 2017, we've seen an increase in our revenues, we've seen a drop in our net loss, yep. and we've seen an overall adoption rate for our solutions that, that has everybody excited about the future. You guys aren't profitable yet. How close are you to that sort of break even cash flow positive territory? Sure, so Q3, um, we posted about 72% increase in revenue quarter over quarter. And not year over year, but quarter over quarter. Uh, at the same time, we dropped our net loss, uh, our net EBITDA loss from about 300,000 to $200,000. So we think our net loss is entirely manageable. Um, we think our business model is starting to show the scale that we know it has whereby when we increase revenues, we don't incrementally increase our operating costs, and therein lies the, the opportunity to profitability in the next three to four quarter time range. How does that work with the hardware and the recurring revenue? So hardware revenue is extremely important for us because every device that we sell ramps our subsequent recurring revenue that we receive out of it. Every device that goes into the field has a platform associated with it, and that generates monthly income for the company. Let's talk about Bell. Uh, Beware has a significant relationship with the company. Can you elaborate on that? We certainly do. Bell has been instrumental uh, in helping us from the early research and development and engineering stage of the product. Uh, in October of this year, we announced commercialization of the product on the Bell Mobility LTEM network. 
And uh, as of today, we announced that Bell is a strategic investor in the company. So we're super happy with the relationship with Bell and we look forward to expanding it in the coming months and years. The advent of 5G, smart cities and new technologies can potentially open up future commercial opportunities for Canadian-based beware and its innovations in the IoT space. MWC 19 in Barcelona has been a whirlwind of technology platforms, some of which could influence the global economy.